this topic is about deep learning but before going into deep learning let's quickly look into what we have looked into machine learning okay so if you notice this is a google trend which i have directly taken from google and it says how machine learning is booming since 2004 so initially it was very less the industry like we had very less i would say the trend was quite less and as you can notice as the years are passing by the requirement for the machine learning engineers have been increasing year by year okay that's one thing which we can notice from the trends and there is second reason why there is a trend which is increasing year by year so that would be the second reason which is pretty simple just imagine in 2000 year 2000 the floppy drive we used to have a floppy drive which might be having of around 8 kb or i don't remember what was the size the maximum size might be 8 kb for the floppy drive and the cost would be like around 10 or 20 rupees so imagine how much it would have been costed for us to save the data of around 1 gb that would have been huge in year 2000 now if you look at in current year buying a like a 1 terabyte i'm not talking about no gigabyte i'm just talking about the terabyte 1 terabyte saving 1 terabyte of data is like i think it's around 2.5k which is quite less right i would say significant less if you compare with the price what we used to get for 1 gigabyte or maybe 1 terabyte in 2000 maybe we haven't thought of 1 terabyte in the year of 2000 now we can even think of 1 terabyte okay we can also think more than that so it's because storing the data has been price of the storing the data has significantly reduced so now we can store more and more data and now once we have more and more data we can explore more and more data once we are able to explore more data we are able to basically we are trying to digest that data once we are able to digest the data it will be easy for us to identify the patterns from that data okay once we are able to identify the patterns from the data it will be easy for us to identify what is a business problem and how we can solve that business problem and what recommendation we can give to our clients to improve their business revenue and that's the reason data science and machine learning has become so important in current world okay so i would say whenever you are playing around with data okay that's basically called as maybe data science or data analysis but there is a slight difference between data analysis and data scientist maybe that we can talk later but anything which you are talking about anything we are which you are working with respect to data it's something that has to do with data scientist or data analyst now what is machine learning basically so machine learning is just a subset of data analysis or data scientist okay why i am telling a subset because if you don't have data there is no question of doing a machine learning because you need historical data to predict something in the future okay? and for that you need data and that's the reason i was focusing so much on the data like why data is so important in current era okay so let me just quickly take some applications of machine learning so like there are a lot of different applications in different industries but i've just uh, noted down few of them so maybe in education center to identify the patterns between the students who will perform quite good who might perform very good who might not perform quite good so these kind of patterns we can identify between the students i'm just giving an example and you can use machine learning in digital marketing so you can always target your customers okay using marketing when it comes to machine learning by identifying the patterns between different customers that's one thing okay third thing in healthcare let's say that uh, you know that right uh, if you want to perform or like if you want to undergo any test for a cancer let's say it cost quite high right so by looking at the historical data we might have built a machine learning algorithm and if there is a new patient comes to me and tell asks me whether i like i want i'm not sure if i'm diagnosed or like i'm not sure if i have a cancer or something like that so maybe what we can do at that point of time we can just do the prediction modeling we can just predict whether the person has cancer or not based on different criteria maybe his age maybe the symptoms maybe on his weight height and different factors 
so there can be lot many factors by which we can just predict whether the person might have a chance of getting a cancer or not okay so health in machine learning is being widely used in healthcare as well but one disclaimer when you are using machine learning in a healthcare you have to make sure that your algorithm is very robust okay because this is indeed you are actually trying to predict something which is for a human being right so this is very important when it comes to car maybe when it comes to scores when it comes to marks when it comes to transportation maybe when it comes to retail it's not that important but when it comes to hospitals healthcare clinical trials you have to be very careful while you are building your algorithm because your algorithm has to be robust and very accurate okay and then machine learning is also useful in entertainment now must you must have noticed in netflix also right if you watch lot of movies with respect to particular actor maybe then lot of movies will be recommended to you based for, like for that particular actor itself and then in retail in retail you must have already noticed this is a very basic example of machine learning where you must have noticed that uh milk and bread are kept always together in the supermarket you will not see milk is kept at one corner of the supermarket and bread is kept at the other corner of the supermarket you will hardly see that the reason why it is because the reason is whenever we go for buying milk the normal tendency of a human being is to buy bread along with milk and that's the reason both are kept next to each other so these are the patterns which we generally find okay so what i'm trying to tell you here is when we have lot of historical data let's say i am a machine learning engineer okay and i am looking at lot of historical data of let's say retail and i have identified that uh, in the previous transaction all my previous transaction i have identified that 95% of the people let's say who are buying milk or like have also bought bread and let's say that 90% of the people who bought bread has also bought a jam okay a butter maybe so by looking at those transactions all the previous historical transactions i will try to understand those transactions all the data i will try to find the patterns and then the patterns could be anything the example which i have given bread and butter maybe milk and bread maybe okay so you will also notice in the grocery shops or the supermarkets right all the vegetables will be kept at one place it's not like tomatoes are at one place and the potatoes are the are the, at the sec, like at the corner right so those things are quite important to identify the patterns between different things and re in retail this will be quite useful okay and then in machine learning can also be used in transportation to identify the route which we need to take okay and then we can also use that in mechanical and aviation so because i am coming from a mechanical background i can give you some of the examples maybe let's say if you have noticed that as a mechanical engineer temperature is something which we always look for right let's say that you are working on a maybe like two wheeler or four wheeler let's say you are doing a computational fluid dynamics analysis of two wheeler or four wheeler maybe and you want to identify or you want to predict the temperature now let's say that if you are trying to identify or predict the temperature or evaluation of temperature for any component of a uh maybe let's say pulsar or anything of any two wheeler or four wheeler you might have to do a transient simulation of computational fluid dynamics right and imagine when you are working with computational fluid dynamics you have to solve for all those navier stokes equations isn't it so don't worry what i am talking about navier stokes it is not important here but as a mechanical engineer if you are all mechanical engineer you would be knowing what is navier stokes equation right it's all about mass conservation momentum conservation energy conservation which we always do as a mechanical engineer so and when we work with computational fluid dynamics we require a lot of time to perform a transient simulation and after doing a transient simulation we identify what will be the final temperature or the temperature of a particular component maybe brake disc maybe fuel tank or maybe something else okay so but if we can use machine learning and try to look at the historical data with respect to time maybe and then we can predict what could be the temperature of this brake disc or fuel tank at this point of time so we can do different kind of time analysis and predict temperature maybe maybe we can predict the mass flow okay so machine learning is very useful in different industries okay let's try to look into what's happening uh, with respect to every 60 seconds what's going on in the world okay 
you must have already heard this phrase right data is a new oil and the reason which i have already given because the data storage has become quite the price of data storage has significantly gone down okay so in 60 seconds you would notice uh like around maybe 1 million of dollar has been spent on amazon so you can imagine how much data have been collected okay and around 7.7 million hours of videos getting watched in netflix in every 1 minute okay by different people in in the world you can imagine how much data we can collect that maybe in one country maybe lot of people are watching with all the movies with respect to a particular genre so maybe we can always recommend based on the geographical data we can always recommend those people from that particular country the movies which might be of interest to them okay maybe they are in a particular country they are actually watching only the thriller movies then maybe we can always recommend thriller movies to them okay and let's say that i am a huge fan of maybe let's say uh, let's say nick jonas okay then i have been watching lot of movies of nick jonas in the past so whenever there is a new movie of nick jonas netflix would recommend me a movie of nick jonas and then by that uh, basically what netflix is trying to do is they are trying to attract the customer and then they are actually earning the more revenue okay so there are a lot of many examples what's happening with respect to data and why data is very important and what we are doing with that data maybe you can you look into youtube as well 4.5 millions of videos are getting watched every one minute so isn't it fantastic like how much data we can collect in every 60 seconds more the data better your machine learning algorithms i so there can be a small disclaimer here which but don't worry but for machine learning data is very important that's what i'm trying to explain here okay it's not every time that more the data machine learning algorithm will be performing better that you will learn later on or maybe if you have gone through my first machine learning course or second machine learning course you might have already knew by then uh, by now but in general more the data like better than and better better your machine learning algorithm will be most of the times okay not every time so but to perform machine learning algorithm the basic necessity is data okay and then people tweeting around 87500 people tweets every 1 minute okay and around 188 million emails have been generated or sent every 1 minute maybe in gmail okay so and then 3.8 million search queries in every 1 minute in google so maybe whenever you must have noticed right whenever you try to write something on google it always pops up uh, by giving some suggestions based on the people who have already searched in the past a lot of different people might have searched something similar what you are searching now okay you are searching something related to let's what is machine learning so maybe once you start typing what is machine something will pop up on the bottom like something will actually pop up while writing machine it will automatically show you that learning as well if you have tried on the google search as soon as you write what is machine it will pop up what is machine learning right so something on those lines and nowadays you must have already seen alexa siri lot of things are built on this machine learning and deep learning okay so basically machine learning are of three types okay which we have also looked into first webinar and in our first course and this is a very basic thing supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning so what is basically supervised learning it's supervised learning is something where you have the label data label data in the sense when you have both inputs and output now what does that mean let's say that you you are trying to predict the temperature right you know that temperature is your output now what will be your input maybe your vehicle velocity okay what maybe the mass flow rate maybe the if you are trying to predict the temperature of the brake disc maybe the dimensions of the brake disc sorry so those are all inputs and the output will be temperature so that's your supervised learning so basically if i want to give a very layman example let's say in our childhood we all like whenever we are trying to study something we were supervised by our instructor right or teacher so that's that's something called as supervised learning we are being supervised okay similarly in the data set when your all inputs have your output something like temperature 
then it is all your inputs are being supervised by your output so that is your supervised learning where you do the prediction of your output okay now unsupervised learning is basically let's say now we are grown up right we do not like we generally know we do, do not need teacher for reading something we try to read by ourselves most of the time teacher will only guide us but most of the stuff will be read by us only right so that's something unsupervised learning there is no one to supervise us okay so when you have only inputs but you don't have any output basically you have let's say in the case of example of groceries or retail right you have all the transactions in the past you don't know what is your output in this case you will just have the transactions based on the transactions you are trying to find the patterns and while identifying the patterns you have found that milk and bread are actually most of the time goes together bread and butter most of the time goes together so those kind of patterns you will find and then you will help your business to grow so there is no output as such that you want to predict something basically temperature or something like that or maybe your revenue or income of a person you are not predicting anything there is no output here it's just that you are playing with your inputs and reinforcement learning is something which is an advance again what happens let's say you are learning from your mistakes in this case so if you want to take an example let's say that you are into an island okay and you don't know anything about that island okay and you are exploring that island let's say that you are like hungry now and you are searching for the food while searching for the food you might actually encounter some danger areas right you will come to know that oh this is a danger spot i should not go over there but how will you come to know whether it's a danger spot or not maybe by exploring right you might have to explore all the places in island so basically now you are learning from a mistake that this is a danger spot and i should not go over there so that's reinforcement learning and you can only do that by using trial and error method okay in reinforcement learning but most of the time you will notice that all the opportunities in the current industries will have based on supervised learning and unsupervised learning